Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone, members, officers and members of the public to this meeting of the Planning and Control Committee. Before the meeting, I'd like to invite the committee member and scrutiny officer to explain proceedings. Eleanor, please. Thank you, Chair, and good evening, everyone. If a member wishes to speak, they should use the speak button located on the microphone unit. The microphone will light up green and the chair will be alerted of your request to speak. When the chair invites you to speak, your microphone will be made live and it will turn red at which point you can speak. When the public participants are invited to speak, their mic microphones will be made live by the committee officer. When requested to vote, voting will be via the yes, no abstain buttons on your microphone unit. Details of how members voted will be shown on the screens around the room and the result will be visible on YouTube stream. In the event of a tied vote, the chair will have the casting vote. Are there any questions before we start? Okay, back to you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, first of all, apologies for absence. I have not received any apologies for this meeting. Are there any further apologies? No. Councillor Tyler? No. Uh, Councillor Tyler is absent. Minutes of the meeting on February the 9th, 2023. I propose that we take as read and approve the minutes of the meeting held on the 9th of February, 2023 as a true record of proceedings. Have a seconder, please. Uh, Councillor Tyson. Yes, I'm happy to second. Thank you. Any comments on the minutes from the 9th of February, 2023? No. Um, shall we go to the vote? Please vote to accept the minutes. Chair, that motion is carried. Notification of any other business, there's none. Chair's announcements, recording. In accordance with council policy, this meeting is being audio recorded as well as filmed. The audio recordings will be available to view on mod.gov and the film recording via the NHDC YouTube channel. Declarations of interest. Members are reminded to take declarations of interest before an item. The detail reminded about this and speaking rights is set out under Chair's announcements on the agenda. To clarify matters for registered speakers, members of the public have five minutes for each group of speakers, supporters and objectors. There's a separate five minute time limit allocated to member advocates. A warning will be given at four minutes to alert you that you have one minute left. At five minutes, you'll be advised the time allowed has ended and the speaker must cease. For purpose clarification, in order to vote on an agenda item at this meeting, members must be present for the entirety of the debate and consideration for that item. If a member leaves the room at any point of the item, they will not be able to vote. Public participation. Can I confirm that the registered speakers are in attendance? Yasmin Kate Patterson. Thank you. Welcome. And Richard Dennis. Thank you. Welcome. Let's go to the agenda. Item six is TPO 00204-2022, land rear of 30 to 36 garden fields, Great Offley. Can I invite Thomas Howe to present? Thank you. May I ask a question before we start, Chair? Is um, it about this this item? It is about this item okay. and, and the following one as well to save time off on. Normally when we see a report before committee, it gives us a reason that it's come to committee. Um, neither does these re reports say the reason they are at committee. Um, and I'm just wondering why we're seeing these TPOs here this particular time, because it's not something we normally see. I'm hoping that um, when... Um, Thomas gives his presentation, but it may become clear. Could you ask those questions again afterwards of him if it doesn't? Is that okay? Yes, please. 
it's just a legal requirement, unfortunately, to have it have it um, confirmed for TPA to be confirmed. It has to come as a public arena for a decision. And because there's no committee in May, um, due to we only have six months in which we can confirm a TPO. And once it's been to committee for ratification, then there's about a six weeks or so process to go through legal before we can actually confirm it. So if it, that's if it's agreed tonight. Um, so we have no choice but to bring it to the committee tonight because there's no committee meeting in May. So to bring it to the meeting with June, if there are other outstanding planning applications would be too late in the process. Uh, I also think uh, the process is because we received objections to us serving the notice that it came before us as well. So, uh, yeah. Um, so I'll start with my, I, I don't have any updates. Um, uh, I'll start with my introduction presentation. Uh, so, yes, this is TPO 00204 um, proposing. Uh, preserva tree preservation order to 10 English oak trees to the rear of 30 to 36 garden fields in Offaly. Uh, this is due to the spinny coming to the attention of the uh, planning team and we considered it expedient to investigate the value of the trees and their subsequent preservation by way of the order. Uh, please could I have my presentation. Uh, so uh, ne next slide, please. So this is uh, the group of trees, the spinny to the rear. It, uh, I believe since this was taken, one of the trees to the left was felled um, and therefore there's 10 trees when originally the tree uh, trees officers said there was 11. Uh, so uh, next slide, please. So this is viewing the trees from the east. No, yes, from the east, which is between West Lane and Lawns Close. Uh, and there's garden fields to the right, one of the new builds. And this is kind of looking uh, straight at the line. Next slide, please. And this is the view just a bit closer. Uh, next slide, please. And again, more uh, angled view showing more of the trees. Again, this is still from that track between West Lane and lawns close. Next slide, please. Uh, this is viewing from garden fields as a, a parking, uh, kind of a parking turning area, uh, looking from the western edge of the line of trees. And next slide, please. And then this is viewed from within garden fields. So that as the road goes towards Luton Road uh, in Offaly, and those are the trees behind the house. And I think that's my presentation done. Thank you. Um, just before I ask you if you have any questions of um, Thomas, um, we ha you have received the survey methodology on these trees, which you have in front of you. So there may be answers in there. Are there any questions from for, for Tom on his presentation? No. Okay, the recommendation. Sorry. Sorry, Chair. Okay. I, I was very late in, in, in putting that on. Sorry. I, I did want to, I was just looking just to remind myself, um, any signs of uh, damage caused by these trees or anything else? I'm, I'm sort of particularly thinking of maybe the next um, uh, uh, one that we've got coming forward, but is there any reported damage? There's nothing, well, I, I couldn't remember seeing anything in the report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure. Is it my? Uh, I'm not sure of any, say, present damage, but I do know residents were concerned about damage that could arise. Um, though, of course, if they evidence, say, if they wanted to maintain the trees and they use that as kind of their justification and they could evidence evidence it, then uh, that, that would probably be looked favourably. But uh, I wasn't aware, say, of any damage caused at the moment. Yeah. Thank you. Can I can I just add, just reading from the report? But um, all the trees in this group have healthy crowns, are in a good structural condition, having had room to develop and form aesthetically pleasing feature as a whole and creating visual continuity. Okay. Any other questions? So the recommendation is that TPO 
00204 be confirmed. Uh, can I have a proposal, please? Councillor Derbyshire? Happy to propose, Madam Chairman. Thank you. And a seconder? Uh, Councillor Nolan? Yep, happy to second that. Thank you. Uh, shall we have a debate? Any debate? Shall we go to the vote? Elena? Chair, that motion is carried. Thank you. Item 7, TPO 00205, 2022, Solishot Hall, Letchworth Garden City. Can I invite Henry Thomas to present, please? Thank you, Chair. Uh, TPO 00205 is a proposal to apply a tree preservation order to a row of 25 pine trees along the eastern boundary of Solishot Hall in Letchworth Garden City. Um, this tree presentation, uh, sorry, this tree preservation order is in response to an application to fell five pine trees at Solishot Hall under the planning reference 22 forward slash 02634 slash TCA, which was refused in November 2022. Um, since since this, we've had two letters of objection, um, one of which has registered to speak tonight. The key issues stated in their objections are the lifting of the road, potential danger of falling of deadwood, uh, damage to the fabric of so Solishot Hall, and damage to the original drainage systems, allowing for rats into the properties. Um, can I have my presentation, please? Uh, first page, please. Um, so the, the, the tree preservation order is proposed to protect a mixture of black pines and scot pines, um, which provide a prominent vista to the residents of Solishot Hall, contributing to the Letchworth Garden City conservation area. Um, this tree preservation order seeks to protect this vista and the private and public amenity that these trees provide. Um, next slide, please. Um, Solishot Hall is a grade two listed block of flats, along with some newer unlisted additions. Um, the site is located within the Electric Garden City Conservation Area, which has a large number of trees. Um, the majority of the trees along on this site form a linear feature along the boundaries. Um, so following an inspection from Maidencroft, it was assessed that the trees provided significant landscape and amenity value to the residents of Solishot Hall and the local area due to their cohesive nature and size. At the time of assessment, all five trees were in good condition, presenting signs of good vitality and no significant structural defects. In addition, it was concluded that these five trees should be considered an integral part of the whole group, which provides a, which provides significant amenity value to the local area. Um, it was identified that the entire row would be suitable for the statutory de designation of a tree preservation order. Um, whilst at the time there were no, uh, whilst, whilst there were signs of roots uplifting to some degree, it was determined that the harm to the local amenity provided by the road, by the removal of this row of trees and the conservation area would outweigh the harm to the road. Um, cover the next slide, please. Um, so the two letters of objection that have been received um, at the time of the application, apart from the visible uplifting of the road, no supporting evidence was submitted to substantiate the objections about the damage of the drainage system or the damage to the fabric of Solishot Hall. Um, under the government guidance for applications for works to protected trees, it is stated that applicants should support claims that trees are damaging lighter structures and surfaces such as garden walls, drains, pavings and drives by providing technical evidence from a relevant engineer, building slash drainage surveyor or an other appropriate expert, um, none of which were submitted at the time of the application. Therefore, should this pre tree preservation order be confirmed, future applications will require technical evidence from a relevant engineer or surveyor. Thank you for listening. Are there any questions from the members about Henry's presentation? Um, Councillor Levitt. Thank you. Um, the thing says it's for 25 trees, but looking at paragraph 4.3.2, 
says all five trees are in good condition, presenting signs of good vitality. Three of these trees were small and slightly poorer quality when compared to the remaining 13 trees. I only adds that to 18. Would you like to answer that? A, a mistake on my part, um, as far as I aware that. Uh, but we intended to put a row on all the all the trees along that row. Um, so I don't, so I don't but know. But I should do that uh, when it's your time, to, and I'll give it up a bit longer to do that. And um, <clears throat> Daniel Allen? Um, could I ask, I know that um, people only got the letters through today about coming and speaking at this meeting. Um, did they have enough of a chance to bring in expert opinion, bearing in mind the lack of time they've had to make presentations today? I, I wasn't aware that they only received them today. Um, the, the TPO was served back in December. Um, Let people know about today's meeting. Um, when did I go up? Obviously, the letters, there's been a delay yet again with the post, so it sounds like they got the letters today, but we weren't aware of that, Councillor Allen, that the letters have taken that long to get through. Just, Sorry. Right, just a moment, just a moment, just a moment, just a moment. Right, can I get this clear that the, the letters to the, uh, to the people concerned have been received today? Just a moment. Can I just take some legal advice on this? Any, just to anyone who just registered by email, email yeah. but we asked um i did ask my colleague in technical support to send letters out to everybody who was originally consulted on the tpo i didn't realize that they'd taken that long to get through can i just take advice is it, is it just as much moment i will i will come back to you I just need to take some advice about this issue. Let me say that. Just could you just give us a minute while we For your couple more minutes, we've got to sort this out. Um, James, did you have contribution? So just to clarify, the email that we received registering it did have one of the letters attached that was distributed on the 29th of March. Obviously, we can't be responsible for the delivery of that because that is for the post service to deliver those. I mean, if there is delays in it being delivered, um, that's obviously not it. Also, in, in response to Councillor Allen, I would say that this is a chance to pre pre present uh, issues that have previously been raised as part of the consultation, not necessarily to enact further expert advice to bring to the committee. So I'm not sure. Um, but I think as far as I can see, the notice has been given on the 29th of March. And Thanks. So the, the notice was given on the 29th of March. It was not received. 
certainly by the two people here until today. But you did have notice enough to come here today. Um, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think this through. Can I let you speak, Karen? Um, as one of the directors of the board, we've actually been trying to deal this with you since January last year, based off to, uh, stuff we put in. So we've actually been in contact on email. So I'd registered and Marlene Gray had registered, but unfortunately she had to pull out of the meeting for health reasons. But only today has the letter arrived and there are actually 74 properties at Solar Shot. So 71 of the properties were not aware of the meeting. So the letter arrived today after 12 o'clock. Everyone at Solar Shot Hall would have received letters because not all would have been involved in the process. I presume I presume people right. have to have been it's involved in the place. process to receive the notification letter. Solar Shot Hall received a copy of the tree preservation order when it was served in December. So we were all involved. Right. I had been in touch on email with Eleanor. Were we aware of the meeting in advance? Uh, could just hold on a moment on that one. Uh, Councillor Allen. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm putting forward that we put this um, off. I think we should delay this because we don't have the suitable information being given to members of the public. Um, I am very much of the opinion um, that we shouldn't be seeing this today. We only received the information two days ago um, ahead of planning. Um, I feel that this has been rushed and I feel that we need to not rush something as important as this. So. Um, Anne, would you like to come back on it? Sorry, you and Etta? Uh, I'm sorry, there's a few things. So the agenda would have been published two weeks before, so everyone was aware that it was on the agenda, so that would have been out to the wider public. So that's the first thing. So the agenda is out for the wider public if they check the website. In terms of the residents at Solar Shot House, um, I'm aware that they were, obviously the letter for today's meeting has come today, but the letter is dated the 29th of March. So it was sent out in good time. And, sorry, Councillor Allen, let me finish. Um, in terms of them being able to attend, obviously two people have attended today, so they were aware and have been able to register on time to attend today. Um, in terms of the consultation, all members would have been consulted when the TPO was being put out, um, to be, to, was being made initially with the time frame for confirmation, which is what we're doing now. So there's nothing, the point that the officer has made is the fact that when the objection was made, there wasn't any representation to counteract that. And that's what they needed in order to make the recommendation that they have today. So this recommendation would have come out anyway, unless they'd done it before this meeting and the agenda. So in terms of you saying that they haven't been given an opportunity to speak against it, they did have the opportunity. They've had six months from the order being made to put their representation before this report has been made to come to committee today. Can I just go to Anne, please? Um, when a draft TPO is served, the council has six months in which to confirm the order. If it's not confirmed within six months, it falls away. And unfortunately, we've got a slight deadline issue because it was served at the beginning of December. We have to confirm it by the beginning of June. And this is the last committee meeting ahead of the, the June deadline in which we can confirm the order. So if we defer tonight, this order will fall away. Those trees will not be protected. So in theory, the, they could go on there you know, tomorrow and fell those trees. There's nothing the council could do. Well, they'd obviously have to come back in with the TCA application because they are protected by conservation area protection. But if we've gone through the route of, if we wish to refuse a TCA application, we then have to serve a TPO. If we then not been able to serve the TPO, the trees are much more vulnerable. So that's something these members be aware of tonight. Um, so we have this time limit ahead of us. The point you make is the fact they've not been given the opportunity to come in with technical advance tonight. I think please be aware that this is a TPO order. And if people want to make work, do works on the trees going forward, they can submit a TPO application with technical support at any point in time. So a TPO 
placement on a tree it doesn't mean you can never undertake works on the tree it just means they have to come and get consent from the council first so if they come in with a tpr application in due course if this order is served and they come in with the technical evidence to say that there is damage by a particular tree to the drains or whatever we will consider it at that point in time it doesn't mean that we never will consider it by not confirming it tonight it just means that they they will have opportunities in the future so just be aware of that you know to make you aware of that point sorry thank you Right, I'm going to uh, quickly take uh, Councillor Allen, then Councillor Blocks, and then Councillor Hunter. I put forward that we defer this. I feel there has not been the right amount of information given to the people that live there to be able to properly speak on this, and I'm sorry I still put forward for a deferral. I just just hold on to that thought, um, Councillor Blocks. Thank you. Uh, it really, uh, it must come down to have we done what is statutorily right? I mean, obviously, with with uh, planning, and you, you'll have to forgive me, but with planning, obviously, there's a, a time and that we have to make people aware, posting the notice on a, a relevant position, putting it in a newspaper, and letting people aware. Have we covered that? That's all we need to know is have we covered that? And if we have, I, I agree. I think we've given enough time for that. But I don't think we write to everybody at a planning application to say, oh, we're, we're going to talk about this one. Would you like to come down to the meeting? I, I'm being facetious, but I don't. I shouldn't be. But that, I think that's the, that's the that's the the thing. Have we statutorily done what we should have done? That is helpful. I'm not aware what the history recognitions of TPA is going off the top of my head. Sorry. Um, in terms of the TPO, so what would have happened was when it was being made, or the draft was being done, it would have been sent to everyone who would be affected by it, which they've already said they've received. So they. So, excuse me, excuse me. It would just wait. It would normally go to the people that have been affected, and most of them would have, all of them would have had the representation, the draft order. And the, if they wanted to make representations, they've got so much time to make the representations and to respond back, which they have because we've got representations being put in the report saying that these are the representation, representations that have come back. So on that, on that point of view, we've done what we're supposed to do. Letters would have gone out. There would be a, a notice in the newspaper as well. So that's been done to, for the draft. The draft was done appropriately and, 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 and in accordance with the proper legislation. This is about confirmation now. So we're, we've moved on from the time that you give people to then make the representations and then consider what, if they want to um, comment on the actual draft and then look to the confirmation, which has to come to committee, um, which is what we're doing now. So as far as I'm concerned, all the legal um, guidelines and statutes have been followed to this point. Thank you. Um, Councilor Hunter. Thank you, Chairman. Um, it's just covered what I was going to say, actually, for the simple reason I know full well that technically the council does not have to even contact individuals, provided it's actually advertised it and served a notice somewhere in the vicinity. Uh, then uh, they've covered their legal requirement because uh, I've had to explain it to people. Why haven't I been written to before? Uh, my secondary question was, I've been doing this for a long while. And conservation areas are very, very, uh, how can I put it, restrictive as far as trees are concerned. Because normally you wouldn't serve a, a TPO on a tree that's in a conservation area. So I was wondering if you could just explain it to me. Thank you. It's because it was a TCA application was made. Um, if you wish to refuse a TCA, the legislation says you then have to go through the steps of considering whether the tree is worthy of putting the additional protection of a TPO on it, which is the situation that's before you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Levitt. Yeah, one last, last little point. Yes, these trees are within the Lechford Garden City Conservation Area. They also fall, fall within the uh, remit of the um, Heritage Foundation, Glacier Garden City Heritage Foundation estate. Um, and as such, they also have protection from that, which isn't actually mentioned in report. And it does require landlords consent to fell trees within that area. And that's meant not mentioned in the report. Uh, so they do already have a secondary level of protection apart from that. So there's two levels to go through. I know it's because I, I live in a conservation area within the estate. And I had to go through all the loops of when I wanted a tree removed. And I know how difficult it is to, to, to do that. And I'm surprised that's not mentioned in the report, but it already has got secondary level. 
Thank you. Um, Dan Allen? After hearing the legal reasoning, I'd withdraw the um, request to defer. It was worth doing, so now we're clear. Um, thank you very much, all who've contributed. Can we go to the registered speakers? Uh, Yasmin Kate Patterson. Hello, thank you. Um, I appreciate what the gentleman's just said about the request to the Heritage Foundation. And we actually initially put our request to the Heritage Foundation in January 2022, prior to putting it towards um, NHDC. Um, we believe that our representative had put it to both, but it went to the Heritage first, who we spoke to, and they had no issues with it. And at that point, we put it to NHDC, along with the um, independent health and safety risk assessment report that we have because of the damage done to the drive, where the tree roots have lifted the drive up in some cases about a foot, and the concrete has fractured. And that's the main access point for our residents who have prams, babies, uh, wheelchair accidents and uh, mobility scooters, and it's now made the pathway unsafe. We also put forward the drains report to show the damage to the drains where the roots have actually gone into the drains. Um, and we've got problems with rats to the new block properties, which were built in the 60s. And although we've applied rat baffles because of the break points in the drains, they're actually ineffective. So we're still getting rats to the property. We then also supported it with um, a structural engineer report because one of the trees in particular is leaning very close to block 34 to 39 and has been flagged as a risk to the actual building. And you also have the wrong five trees on your map. So this is why we are so confused as to why we got the full tree preservation order in the first place, because we don't want to take all the trees down. There are five specific ones that are causing five specific problems, and we can't do anything with the driveway or the drains whilst the trees are those five particular in place. We do have plans for replanting, which we've had to do every time we take a tree down. We know that because we're part of heritage. Um, and we also want to actually upgrade the driveway with a beach hedge at the back of them all the way down to increase the area of environmental standpoint for wildlife. So we did put that in our appeal um, with regards to the future plans, but we have actually submitted reports and you do have the right, wrong five trees. You've got two minutes left, yeah? <laughs> um, that's mainly it. It's health and safety. It's drainage. It's the structural engineer report for the, the lean. It's the wrong five trees. We have got pictures here of the damage to the driveway if anybody wants to see them. Um, thank you, sir, because you have got two minutes left. Could we have the map back on screen? Showing these trees. And would you like to pass around your, your pictures? Um, Janelle, could you? I don't know who's spare. Um, who's spare? Hmm? All right. So, sorry. The um, sorry. Um, sorry, Yasmin. Yasmin, the planning department haven't seen them yet. So, if you'd like to bring them to planning first. Yeah. Can we? Yeah. Yeah. Can we show them? To, can we show them to planning first? Yeah, let's show, them, let's show them the planning first and let give planning a couple of minutes to have a look at these trees. Councillor Morgan. If you leave them there, Chanel will give them out when they want to. Yeah, yes, Chanel will do that. Thank you. If you sit down, Chanel will come get them to get them from you. Yeah. 
Yeah. So are we now showing them to the members? Yes. Um, mem members, you'll now be shown. What are they? I think. Councillor Bloxham, could I possibly ask you not to have a conversation because I'm finding it hard to concentrate. <laughs> So these are the ones we've had. We've had these. Okay. Well, right, lovely. So we'll just let's go to the end of the row so everyone knows that they have seen them. And Yasmin, was there something else you wanted to know yeah. to? East. So the position that you've got marked on there is incorrect. Thank you. Okay. So, um, so that's, uh, thank you for that, Yasmin. You've had your five minutes has, has gone now. Um, questions of clarification. Uh, for Yasmin from members, and strictly for clarification at this point, please, not debate. Uh, Councillor Levitt. Yeah. Not about procedure. Thank you. Just, just for my peace of mind and just to double confirm, you, you said the um, structural reports and everything were sent with the application and have been provided to this planning department. Um, I'm correcting that. And have you had some sort of acknowledgement of that as well? So one of the reports came back when we said, what more information do you need? And we were requested a structural engineer report for the leaning tree. So that came to you later, or not to you, but to whoever it needed to go to later. Um, and the other ones were flagged at the time. Of The photographs are only created this week, so you can actually see the damage to the driveway. So those photos weren't put in at the time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm just looking at the paperwork we've got on the TCA application and on the paperwork for the TPO, and we don't have either structural report on either application. So uh, do you know they've not made it onto the file? So this is the first we've heard of both those reports in this meeting. We've not received them before tonight. Right. Right. Um, well, we'll hold on to that. Any other questions of the Minute of clarification? No. Can we uh, go on to Richard Dennis, please? Am I on? Uh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak. Uh, I'm speaking as somebody who lives um, not in Solishot Hall, but uh, directly at the southeast end of uh, of that line of trees and uh as such they, it forms quite a narrow vista to to us uh, uh, to me <clears throat> um i would agree with uh many of the things that henry thomas said about the uh, the amenity value of these trees i mean they they really are beautiful uh they are part of the the fabric of that area and have been for many years. Over a period of time, we've seen uh, a number of the Scots pine trees taken down. You, we know, you never hear, uh, you never get any notice or anything. I mean, I know it's not our land, so I guess we wouldn't necessarily expect any notice. But you just suddenly one morning a gang of people turn up and start zip, zip, zip with chainsaws and grinders and next thing you know trees are gone uh, and in our case uh we back onto the garages and in our case they're not replaced in that particular area um but i wanted to describe uh, what these trees mean to me that they're they're visual beautiful uh 
uh, things to see. In the winter, they retain their leaves. Beautiful to get when it snows, it gets snow on them. In the summer, you get the they get uplit from underneath. Uh, at the night time, particularly through the winter, we hear uh, owls uh, of both sexes uh, in there. Very comforting at the night time. Uh, I tend to think that the you know things like owls. Uh, are you know they're they're kind of things that live high up in trees. So you need you know you know, you, you need mature trees, trees that have been there for years to support such uh, wildlife. Um, uh, beyond that, all I would really say is that um, you know these trees. Are, I don't know how old they are. They're, I guess they're probably eighty hundred years old. But it takes a long time to replace such a tree. Mature trees, obviously, uh, you know, they they provide a canopy for all sorts of things that uh, develop and form a, a subculture of life over many years. So I, I, I started to think about, well, what's the point of having a TPO on such trees when we live in a in a in a conservation area, and when we have the Heritage Foundation too? And it seems to me, as far as I can make out, it comes down to one one thing really, uh, that in a conservation area, as far as I can make out, if an application is made to modify a tree and that application uh, is not responded to in an adequate time frame, then the presumption is to go ahead. Whereas uh, if you have, a tree preservation order and if the council were not to respond in an appropriate time period then the presumption is that it's refused until such times as you are given the go-ahead therefore given that they are a lovely set of trees that have taken a long long time to uh to grow um i would support the idea that you have a tpo such that there's a process to go through before you can alter them. Um, and if a tree really is a problem, then a TPO can be overturned. I, that's it. Thank you. Do we have points of application, um, for Richard, from the members, from what he's said? No, can I invite the officer to respond to an issue is raised? If you wish to. Uh, I, what, what issues are raised? Sorry, I, I don't know if there were any unanswered questions there. Um, but also to add to what he was saying, with a uh, TPO, um, you can also apply conditions onto them. Um, so we had a condition that it has to be done by a um, registered arborist. Um, and we can also request a replacement condition on TPO trees if they're being failed. Thank you. So the recommendation is that TPO 00205 be confirmed. Can I have a proposal, please? Councillor Willoughby. I would like to um, propose that, um, and I'll reserve my right to speak. Thank you. And can I have a seconder, please? Councillor Daniel Allen, was your name up now? Councillor Allen. I would like to oppose this, and I would say that normally I would say to defer. So we're on to second thing. Yeah, but seeing as no moment. one wants to do that, that's why I was well, putting forward the other option. To. So um, let's just wait and see if we've got a proposal. We've got a seconder. We've got a seconder. So yeah. do you want I'm, to... I'm happy to second that. That's seconded by Councillor Tyson. So... Shall we go to debate? Councillor Willoughby. 
There is um, one thing I'd um, like to ask. How arduous is it to have a TPA re uh, reviewed in light of um, uh, dealing with any of those issues that have been highlighted? If trees are protected, um, anyone can submit an application for works on TPA tree at any time. There obviously an application needs to be made with, with supporting statements. There's obviously been some confusion tonight about these documents that this lady is talking about because we don't have them on our file. Um, I think I should point out that if the if if sufficient information is is submitted with an application to justify that a tree is maybe dangerous or could fall on a building, if the council were to refuse that tree those tree works and then the tree were to fall, the council's then liable. So in the years I've been sort of doing this job, I don't know of any applications for no situation that we would refuse. I think it's very likely that a GPO would be granted for works of trees within a TPO group. Um, I mean, the the point the point of the TPO is just to give the trees extra protection, as the speaker pointed out. If a TC application is not determined in time, if it's an automatic granting. If a TPO application is not determined in time, the application sits there until it is determined. So there is that extra level of protection. But yes, it's very common for applications to be submitted um, to, to the department for works TPO trees. And it's very common for pruning, deadwooding, maintenance works to be granted. We all know trees need maintenance works. That's a normal part of what we do as an everyday process. Process. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bloxham. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I do have a little bit of an issue with it. And I think it's it's around I, I, the idea of tree preservation order, absolutely fantastic. And yes, we should look at this. But we've already heard that we've, we've potentially got something in place with the Heritage Foundation at the moment anyway. But my main issue is that we've already got evidence of damage and particular problems that these trees are causing. So what we're going to do now is put a tree preservation order on and then if that and then they're going to have to resubmit this to then require works to be done to it. And I think mm. we, we might as well just get the works done if it's needed, investigate that and then look at putting the tree preservation order on. Yes, I know that that tree preservation order means if it's on there, we can come with that. But the residents are already coming with that information and it's quite clear from the pictures and actually i have been up up there i do do it's not my area it's yours i think or it's well can be um but the uh uh it's um it it, it is a uh, it is a problem those paths are not good the roads are not good there purely because of these trees so i think we're, we're sort of putting something in i can't see the reason why we're putting in now when we already know there's there's particular problems that we're going to have to deal with Thank you. Uh, Councillor Levitt. Thank you. I'm going to, I was going to raise similar concerns to Councillor Bloxham um, about where these this this information has gone in relation to this these applications. I've looked on the planning portal while we've been talking to see what was on there. I found the original one about the felling of the trees, uh, 2019, I think that one was submitted. Uh, and there's there's 22, isn't there? Uh, and this, well, uh, there was one to fell five trees that was refused in 2019, and there was supporting documents, but nothing about surveys that was included in that, all of the application forms and everything there. When I've gone on the planning portal to look at th for this particular one to see what documents are listed with it, it's not actually on the planning portal, or I can't find it under its list, under its number, or under any search terms or anything. I cannot find this one at all on the planning portal using public access the one is 20 the reference is 22 stroke 02634 tca which is the one submitted at the end of last year um i believe tpos only go on the portal once they're confirmed they don't go on in the draft stage so the tpo wouldn't yet be on the system because it's not a confirmed tpo okay thank you for that so i i do still have concerns in the 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 management committee is telling us that they have submitted all the re relevant documentation to do the works they want. It has gone through Heritage Foundation, which is the second level, and they don't have any issues with it. Uh, and I'm concerned that we're putting a restriction in place before or after that application. It's it's they're quite adamant that that application is correct as being correctly submitted and. The management company Manage yeah, that has been correctly submitted. All the evidence has been provided. And we're now wanting to put TPO on without that evidence being looked at in relation to the TPO. It, it's 
if the, the, the information exists, why hasn't it been considered? Or if, if it hasn't been considered, where's it gone? Just go to, to uh, Councillor Nolan, please. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I think in the interest of trying to move this along a bit, because I think what's been raised so far is quite correct, that clearly, for whatever reason, the information has been provided but hasn't been picked up. Uh, taking the point that we can make TPOs conditional, and given that the, we're questioning five particular trees out the entire group, is there no way we could put a conditional piece in around once the information has been analysed by the planning department, if they feel that there is the requirement to do as works, those five trees could be kept out of the TPO at the current time, allow the relevant works to take place, and then potentially considered later on for inclusion, whatever then may be replaced there, so that the 20 that are not causing an issue, and I don't think have been raised today, can get the relevant protections, and it's only the five that may need the works then, once that consideration has been made, can then be considered separately. Thank you. Um, you can amend. You can amend the description of works in the TPO um, if you if you wish. You could exclude those trees out of it. And and when you when you list TPOs, you can either do it by specific trees and numbers, or you can do it as a group value. Um, obviously, if the, it, this would appear to be a group value coming before you tonight as a group of twenty five trees. However, if you wish to discount those ones out and then sort of change it to tree preservation of 10 trees or 12 trees, whatever it is, then you could do it that way, yes. So you Thank can excuse you. them, yeah. Um, any response to that as a thought, members? Um, can, uh, Councillor Willby? Uh, certainly, as the proposal, I would uh, accept that amendment to my proposal um, if that's uh, the considered thought across the whole committee, or well, not necessarily the whole committee, but the majority. Um, the The question is, uh, could you have those within the TPO, but with amended to suggest that those works, the necessary works would take place, and then they remain in the TPO once those works have taken place? Or is it or is it all or nothing kind of or is it a sort of you know you can't have those trees in there and have the works done to them as part of this um TPO order? I, I guess it's whether or not the trees are to be felled. If the trees are to be felled, then clearly there's nothing left to remain in the TPO. <laughs> um if it's just dead wooding and maintenance, then yes, obviously the remainder of the tree could remain in as part of a group value. Councillor Allen, then Councillor Tyson. I'm nervous that the correct five trees would be the ones identified. I feel that this whole TPO issue has had too many problems around it with information going out, with identification of individual trees, with lost documentation. I say again, I know that it means we will lose it, but it should have been deferred. If we can't defer it, I'm going to have to vote against it. So I'll propose against this tree preservation order. Councillor Tyson? I think it is that we're, we're seem to be overcomplicating a, a situation that um, that doesn't need to be made so um, elaborate. And I do understand that there may have been some procedural um, inconsistencies perhaps along the way, but if, um, if the TPO is applied to the group of trees, um, an application can still be made for works to any of those trees, and I don't understand why that represents such a massive problem. Um, if the five trees that were identified in the initial instance were the wrong five trees, but the consultant came in and said that all of the trees uh, were fine to be um, put in a group with one, one TPO, it doesn't really matter which five trees were incorrectly assessed in the first place because the consultant that we're basing this advice on has said that all the trees in the group are fine. So uh, that doesn't seem to be an issue to me either as such. I, mean, I still think that the, the TPO for the group is still the easiest option and the most effective way of protecting the trees. Okay, can you just say yes, I mean, you can't speak at this point because it's just the members debate. Um, Councillor Levitt. Thank you, Chair. There seems to be a fairly obvious solution, actually. We, there's disputes over documents and whatever, and whether this TPO is correct or not. 
to me, the obvious solution is, is not to confirm TPO, in other words, to vote against the current one, and a new TPO be prepared, which is done properly, taking into account all the documentation that's already been in place and the correctories are identified, rather than try and mess about with something that seems to be in a little bit of a state and there seems to be a lot of dispute over, is is um, easiest way to me is forget about this one and start again. So I won't be supporting this, this one. Thank you. So we have got a uh, proser and seconder for the TPO, which is covering all the trees or some of the trees, which is it? Do <laughs> you cancel a little bit? I, I'm... Yes, sorry, this has become uh, rather confusing now, um, particularly as we don't seem to know 100% which five trees it is. So I think I take uh, Councillor Tyson's point that actually this, if we put forward this GPA, there's no reason that there couldn't be a review to suggest work should be taking place on these five trees that are have been identified. So I, I think it makes sense to go forward with all the trees being put into this TPO and then works to be uh, uh, put in as a, a separate application at this time. Thank you. We're going to go with that. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't, didn't see you. Councillor Derbyshire. Thank you, Madam Chairman. In that case, if it is going to be for the full trees, I will second Councillor Allen's um, proposal to refuse. Door two. Are you trying to make this evening as complicated as possible? Yeah, we. Yeah, so we go with the approved. I, I understand the sentiments, but we we're going to go with the with the approval, as specified by Councillor Willoughby. Uh, can we go to the vote, please, Eleanor? Just make sure that everybody's on what we're. What's been proposed? <laughs> all the trees. It's all the, yeah. No, I just want to make sure everybody right. It's all the all the trees. That we are accepting the recommendation, the PT, uh, of all the trees. Okay. Chair, that motion is lost. Okay, right. So, Councillor Allen and Councillor Dove. Oh, are you sure? Yeah, we agree. As you were, as you were, as you were. That's thank you. And we'll see what comes in the future, shall we? Um, item eight, planning appeals. Can I invite Anne MacDonald to present, please? Thank you. Um, thank you. The appeal summary starts on page 27 of the pack. There's been six appeals in in the last few months and they've all been dismissed. Um, I don't really have any sort of specific questions to, to draw to your attention or points to draw to your attention, apart from one on the um, land east of Pickenage Road, which was a permission in principle. I'm sure members remember that. It was a rather aggressive applicant who appealed non-determination on day one after the eight-week date. So members, it came to the application for you and you had to resolve to make a decision of what you would have made if you'd been in a position to be in the determining authority. Um, we obviously decided to go with refusal. I'm pleased to see that it's been dismissed at appeal, but actually the reason why I'm bringing it to your attention is because it's an even harsher decision than you yourselves made um, because the inspector's also thrown it out on landscape value impact, which has pretty much put a sort of um, ban, I suppose, on any development coming forward. So any development coming forward on that site has got a much harder test to get over as a result of that appeal decision than we themselves put on, we put on our site. So I was quite pleased with that decision, <laughs> has to be said. Um, so unless anyone's got any specific questions, that's my summary on the appeals. Thank you. Yeah. Sounds good, doesn't it? Thank you. Any questions, Avan, about the appeals? Uh, item nine, current enforcement notices. Again, can I invite Anne to present? 
Um, again, I think that's self-explanatory. I don't have any um, any points I'd like to raise unless anybody's got anything specific they'd like to ask. No? Yes? Oh, so part two, sorry. Is that what you're referring to? Um, sorry, I was... Yes, I didn't turn over the page. I do apologise. I've just turned over the page. Um, so that reports for noting. And then item 10, exclusion of press and public. I propose that under section 100A of the Local Government Act 1972, the press and public will be excluded from the meeting on the grounds the following report will be inc involve the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraphs 5 and 7 of part one of schedule 12A of the said act as amended. Can I have a seconder, please? Uh, Councillor Willoughby, you second him? I have a second, Chair. Thank you. Can we go to the vote, please, Anna? Chair, that motion is carried. Thank you. We'll just wait to ourselves in private session um councillor strong it, we are now in part two she can, can she stay yeah. are you sure
Are we okay? So we're now back in public session. So I can now declare the meeting closed. <laughs>